All right, I, I just wanted to share something I, I, that I happen to think about as my, my brother-in-law had asked uh, me to write a, a letter for their, their church's newsletter. And, uh, and so I, I shared a, a couple thoughts. And I was thinking about the idea of waiting. We're waiting. We've been waiting for six months now, haven't we? Uh, and boy, we're going through transitions. And my brother was talking about trusting in science. And, and I understand there's science is important. I'm not belittling science. But how many times has science changed what they've said during this time about what they can do, what we can't do, and those types of things? But I was thinking about the concept of waiting. And, uh, you know, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And uh, waiting's never fun. But yet, if you look in the Bible, how often did God make his people wait? I mean, uh, made Abraham wait? Made the people of Israel wait 430 years. But he had a purpose when he brought them out. Then they waited a year at Mount Sinai. Again, they had a purpose. And then even during the middle of punishment, for 39 more years, what happened? They waited. But I thought especially of the man, Joseph. Think about that. God had given him a dream. You know, I'm not talking about me just having a vision of what I want our church to do, but a real dream. And he saw himself, of course, with his brothers and his family worshiping or bowing down. And then you see him being sold into slavery. And then, just as it looks like it's getting better, he's put into prison. And of course, the key thing through all that is that it, where it says he's, this happens and this happens, it says, and the Lord was with Joseph. That's the key in that passage. The Lord was with him, but he had a whole lot of time to think. I mean, the Bible doesn't tell us about it, but the journey down to Egypt, long journey, thinking. In, as a slave, thinking. In jail, now he in, ended up being the trustee of the jail, but at first he was just stuck in jail, wasn't he? And he's there. Do you ever think that he wondered, what in the world is God doing? I, you say, well, he knew. No, I, I, the Bible doesn't tell us that he knew. God didn't say, okay, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. In fact, it's kind of clear that it's not until not only has he in jail, or a slave, and then in jail, but even when he is brought out in the second in command under Pharaoh, it's after, what, seven years plus at least another two, his brothers come in, and all of a sudden he remembers that vision. That dream. You see, what I'm getting at is this. Brother mentioned that you were going into a storm, coming out of a storm, or in the middle of a storm. Well, during all that time, what was going on? Joseph was waiting. I don't think he knew exactly how it was going to play on out. Uh, he didn't, he didn't, God didn't give him the vision of all that going on. Just like when God told Eve that someday one of her children was going to crush the head of the serpent. She thought, that's Cain. Well, wrong seed. He was the seed of Satan, wasn't he? But aren't you glad the story of Joseph doesn't end with him in jail? I mean, it doesn't say, mm, this happened, but there's the end of the story. And in the middle of all this, if we're not careful, we see this as the end of the story. But God is still writing our story. And what we need to recognize is, A, God is still with us, like he was with Joseph. And not only is he with us, but we're supposed to be faithful. This is not a time just to set and say, well, we're just going to circle the wagons and do our best. But I believe God wants us to, to, to look at how we can effectively minister and, in fact, minister better during this time than perhaps we were back in February. Maybe, maybe God is stripping off some of the frivolities of our religion that we are just going through. Maybe some people that were frivolities that we thought we couldn't live without. And God is saying, you know what? You need to learn that you can't live without me.
And we need to be looking for how God is going to end our story. I can't wait to see how God's going to end the story for each and every one of us. But I tell you what, this isn't the end of it right here. We're just in the middle of it. And as Joseph was faithful, boy, didn't that end, it, it, didn't it end well? I mean, it, it, he was able to deliver his family. And yet, in the middle of the storm, the middle of the battle, he was waiting. And so are we. And so we need to be faithful. Amen.